Ladies and gentlemen, we're not here speaking hate. We're not here trying to hate against them. They have every right to come to God and repent. We are here trying to share the gospel of Jesus Christ so that they may have life and have it abundantly. Because if they don't repent of their sins, if they don't come unto God, they will be cast into that lake of fire and never lost in judgment. So you must come unto God today because the Holy Spirit is here today. And if you feel offended by this, then that's the Holy Spirit convicting you of sin. Hallelujah. Amen. Out, Pluto. Out, Pluto. Because they know that it's the truth, they know what I'm saying is real, and they don't want you to hear everything. You will face God one day, yes. and He will judge you by the commandments. If you're standing, it means you're not saying. If Christ says I'm the way, then the rest of the gods can't be true. If truth is only one, always one. Command the Spirit to let go of Him right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you can do it. Claim the name of Jesus right now. Claim him. Claim him in the name of Jesus. Call upon the Lord right now. Ladies and gentlemen, God is the ultimate and sovereign judge for sin. Homosexuality is sin by his order. It is not decided by public opinion or deceived slash false clergy. Changing societies do not dictate God's standards. Today, I speak against the sin. I come against the evilness in this area in the name of Jesus. Sin is, def is defined by God for us in the Bible. It is the source for what God says is holy and righteous. Our sin and abomination, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 states that today, it states that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not, quote, go with the flow. That's why many people today reject him. You see, God's word says that homosexuality is unnatural, a perversion, an abomination, fornication, vile afflictions, and a great sin against him. He states any sexual act outside of marriage is adultery. Hallelujah. Sex is to be between a man and a woman within marriage. Many, many, many people may say and ask the question, is homosexuality a sin? And what does it mean? But ladies and gentlemen, God's design for natural sexual relationships is part of his plan. Homosexuality falsifies what God designed. You see, sin often means not only rejecting God, but denying or rejecting how and why we are made. And through it may be considered acceptable by some today. Even in some churches, it is not acceptable to God. And we need to take that very seriously. But instead, some people rather go with the flow and accept what society brings because they're just too scared to come against the establishments because they lack their faith in God neither do they hold to the Holy Spirit which convicts sin you see sexual sins in this nation are running rapid and especially in the day of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah this is the origin of the word sodomy despite warnings they refuse to repent the same people today are acting the same exact way and God destroyed those cities in time. And it was recorded as a warning for all future generations. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 20 through 21. Huh? In the book of Enoch as well. I read the whole book. Yeah, I studied this stuff. Yeah, especially in the end where Enoch was like, what's this you're building, Lord? Yeah. And he was like, oh, this is going to be the place for when the fallen angels come. Uh, he said, uh, he said, uh, he said to his angels, uh, city of Sodom and Gomorrah uh -huh. to bear witness to the people that uh, and the acts of sin that was uh, committed. Uh -huh. The men there that were so corrupted, they were trying to sleep with the angels. God said, I must destroy trying to this sleep man. with the angels. Yes. <laughs> and what you're speaking is so true. Exactly. Their agenda is destroying our land and it's ungodly. That's right, and that's I, right. I just love what you're speaking, man. I'm going to follow your word. Amen. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, God's design for natural sexual relationships is part of his plan. Hallelujah.
but I'm going to speak on some scriptures today on which homosexuality is found in Leviticus chapter 18 verse 22 Leviticus chapter 20 verse 13 Romans chapter 1 verse 26 to 27 the price paid for homosexuality and other fornications are told in 1st Corinthians chapter 6 verse 6 to 19 correction 1st Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 to 10 Jude chapter 6 verse 7 uh, Romans chapter 1 verse 18 and in spite of the growing secular humanistic trend to think that it's okay to be gay it is a, a, a righteous lifestyle most vocal Christians are today or not from forward but they are trying to share Christ's love for the homosexuals and trying to keep them and from the horrific judgment that's coming upon this nation. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not here speaking hate. We're not here trying to hate against them. They have every right to come to God and repent. We are here trying to share the gospel of Jesus Christ so that they may have life and have it abundantly. Because if they don't repent of their sins, if they don't come unto God, they will be cast into that lake of fire and everlasting judgment. So you must come unto God today because the Holy Spirit is here today. And if you feel offended by this, then that's the Holy Spirit convicting you of sin. Hallelujah. It's here now. It's here now. It's here now. It's here now. Ladies and gentlemen, there is absolutely, there is absolutely is hope for the homosexuals. And God can cleanse and purify all persons from sin. But they got to make the choice today. And as many scriptures as there are that address sin, there are more that speak about forgiveness and redemption. And he is able to give deliverance to any who sincerely desire true freedom and salvation. But ladies and gentlemen, people are not concerned about uh, eternal salvation or getting right with God. They want God to tell them that they're okay, that they're being good, that what they're doing is fine. So you know what they do? They go and seek other religions that tell them this, the thing that they want to hear. They want the itching ear. Isaiah chapter 30 tells us about this hallelujah but the people here don't want to hear that message there are a few here who have the word of God in their heart who want to hear it but this message is pointed to those who are unbelievers those who are living in sin and this is a warning to you that you must turn away from that sin and if you don't turn away from that sin and you pass from this life you will be judged for your sin and the wages of sin is death which means that when you die your physical death you're going to die the spiritual death as well such as and such as demonstrated in 1st Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11 King James Version and such were some of you but you were washed but you were sanctified but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God this verse says some of you were meaning they became past you see, we are offered the empowering spirit of God to help us to turn from our sins. Coming out of doing drug addictions and drugs, homosexuality, pornography, and all other sin isn't always easy. But God will provide you the way. There is no such thing that a person could come unto Christ and say, well, I tried. I tried to turn away from sin. See, this is the reason why people are acting the way they're doing towards me right now. It's because they're not used to this message. They're used to the message of, what can I give God? And he give me. They want to treat God like an ATM. Pay a little deposit in. Pay a little withdrawal. Want to treat him like a credit card. Give some credit. Low interest. But God don't work like that. God wants you to turn away from the sin. Because the wage of sin is death. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are walking around without a relationship and you think you're good, you're going to have a rude awakening when the rapture happens. Because you're going to find yourself right here with a government that's going to be controlled by the Antichrist. Because the spirit of the Antichrist is already here. It's just about time for him to show up. Hallelujah. God will provide a way. And children of God are to love into the kingdom those who desire repentance and to live by his natural plan you see meanwhile while people are using the word hate speech and using all these other words they're not they're missing the fact they're missing the message 
that it's not hate speech, but that it's a deliverance speech. It's a speech for you to, to, to find a way. And if you feel offended, that's just not you getting mad. That's the conviction of sin inside of you. You're getting convicted because you know what I'm saying is right. If it was up to the, some of the people around here, I'd be dead. Let's thank God that they didn't happen. Let's praise the Lord today that this isn't like some other countries where if you're caught out here doing such thing, they'll cut your head off. Let's thank God that he loved you so much that he provided someone to come out here and give you the message. Because the last time somebody came out here and did the same exact thing was back in the 70s. And now today is 2019. Got people coming up to me telling me, I pray for this. Prayers are answered. They not only pray for this for their benefit, but they pray for this so that some of you who are, who are unsaved may come to the knowledge of the truth. Hallelujah. I saw them. That's why I came here. Praise the name of the Lord today. Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of our sins and rose again the third day. You see, he does... Oh, you want to fly? You want to fly? You see, hallelujah, I got, some, I got something for you. Here, come, come get it. See? Phone see, I got scriptures for you right here. You're not supposed... You got your iPhone. No. You... Take this with you. God bless you. Have a good night. Hallelujah. Full of garbage. You see, God desires that we repent and be forgiven of our sins by coming into a personal relationship with Him. Not a personal relationship with your fingers, your famous congressman or your mayor, but the, uh, a personal relationship with the Creator. You see, ladies and gentlemen, it's not about and while you make a complaint, yeah, that's right. God bless you. Thank you for taking the picture. I know where you're going to put that complaint at. Make sure you put 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 in the complaint when you put it out there. God oh, bless you, ma'am. Oh, Jesus Christ loves you. Put a caption of fire underneath there. Spend more time trying to seek God than trying to create trouble for the men and women of God. You see, we live in a culture where the concept of sin has become entangled in legalistic arguments over right and wrong. Even many of us consider what is sin. We think of violations of the Ten Commandments. Even then, we tend to think of murder and adultery as major sins compared with lying and cursing and idolatry. You see, it's funny that every time I speak against sin, somebody walks around with a flute, playing a flute around here, whatever that instrument is. But we know this is the work of Satan today. Because if the man was of God, he wouldn't walk around here interrupting the message of God. So the truth is this, is that sin is defined by the original translations of the Bible, which means to miss the mark. And the mark in this case is the standard of perfection established by God and evidenced by Jesus. Viewed in that light, it is clear that we are all born in sin and all fallen short in the glory of God. Ladies and gentlemen, the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And in light of this, it does no good to compare ourselves to others. We cannot escape our failure to be righteous in our own strength. This is by God's design because we only when we understand our weakness will we consider relying on the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The last part is, uh, that's why Ryan. <laughs> you see, sin is mentioned hundreds of times in the Bible. Starting with the original sin, when Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And even that it seems that if, if sin is simply the violation of any of God's laws, including the Ten Commandments. You see, Paul, however, pits this in perspective in Romans chapter 3, verse 20, when he says, Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. You see, God wants us to recognize our sins. Even those who have not murdered or committed adultery, willing to find themselves convicted of lying or of worshiping false idols like some Catholics do up in the church. 
like wealth or power or head of God, but tragically sin in any amount will distance ourselves and us from God. And surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor is his ear too dull to hear, says Isaiah chapter 59, 1 through 2. But, our, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. You see, we must resist the temptation to act as if we are righteous, especially by leaning on our own good works. John chapter 1 verse 8 through 10. If we claim to be without sin, then we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all of righteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his words have no place in our lives. But take people today. More concerned about credit scores. More concerned about, you know, wiping their, their background check clean. So they'll go up to a judge to try to get their record to sponge. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, the record that you need to get a sponge is your sin. And that can only be forgiven by the God of heaven and earth. Elohim, the God of Israel, the God of Moses, Isaac, Jacob, Abraham. Hallelujah. He's the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Woo. What is sin? A call to repentance. The good times in all of this is that once we recognize ourselves as sinners, we need only to repent. Hallelujah. We need to repent. And the good news of this is that once we recognize ourselves as sinners, we need only to repent and embrace Jesus to be forgiven. You see, Jesus can forgive us because he died and rose again three days later in victory over sin and death. And the Apostle Paul refers to this process of recognizing sin and being responsible for it as godly sorrow. And you see, godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 through 11. See what is this godly soul has produced in you. The earnestness, what earn eagerness to clear yourselves. What indignation, what alarm, what longing, what concern, what readiness to see justice done. At every point you have proved yourselves to be innocent in this matter. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord today. I want to try something real quick. Done. Hold on, keep recording. You should see the reaction of some people. Hmm. Boy, they were hot. They were hot, boy. They were Good. bad. Good. That's what we want. We want them convicted. Yo, I need bread. You missed it. Why are you always late? <laughs> My phone is dead. It, it, I need a new phone. Wow. My phone is completely Dude, gone. I call it on tape. We call it on tape, man. What happened? He held it down for the team. There was this guy that was standing right here that was just speaking all this nonsense. Talk about, uh, what was he saying? Nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking to the whole witnesses over there. And what they saying? No, he, the minute, the minute you, you ask him the question, how do you answer John 1 uh, verse 3? He couldn't answer it. And he was like, oh, here, 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 here's what we're going to get to now. Here's what we're going to get to. We don't want to speak to, uh, to you about this anymore. What? I should turn the speaker over there and, <laughs> and start speaking to them. Remember I told you about this? This little thing right now? What is it? It's a wireless mic. Oh, this is the new mic. Um, where it go? Yo, it's cold out here. Man, it's not cold. It's It's not, cold, it's not that chilly. It's all It's freezing out here. How you doing, man? Hey, 
What are they doing over there? Trying to, <laughs> try, trying to, try, trying to silence us. Exactly, trying to silence us. They do all. The one guy came over here with the um, with the little that? horn or whatever that thing is called. But that's okay, cause God got a bigger, bigger trumpet. Exactly. And it's gonna blaze. Dude, this microphone is loud. Like, yo, it's 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 tough. You were talking with the other microphone? Yeah, yeah, I was talking with that one just now. Can you hear me? <laughs> Let me see if this works. You got some messages? I got a message, man, but I'm just upset with those Jehovah's Witnesses, man. They just can't <laughs> answer the question, man. They, never they don't want to act. They can't answer the John 1, 3 verse. It says it in, the, in, in their translation. He was like, he was stuck. Because it says the same thing in their translation. It says all things were made through him and by him. He didn't call for backup, did he? Huh? He didn't call for backup? Like 10,000 of them would show up? No, no. Yo, you should have been here when we first got here. There was two Jehovah Witness ladies right there. Yeah, they saw me. They was giving him the death stare. They saw him pull out most of his equipment. They just flew. Oh, they, they were... They were yep, oh, they were standing... Yup, and, and then they, they was... This lady, she was like this, looking at him like this. Looking at him all evil. He pulled out this. She, they just left. Yo, this show is too sensitive. I can't use it. I'm almost done with the message. No, I don't... Take, take your time. I'm cold, man. I should have bought a jacket. Oh, oh, this... man, I don't like wearing these sweaters, man. <laughs> you, have, you have to get a zipper one. Dude, man, when we first got here, sheriff officers would go all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Witness there, and then we got different demons come over here. One guy tried to use the Bible against us. Did the cops come and bother you guys? No, no they, were just, they were just looking at us. Staring One at guy us. came here and said the Bible said God was evil. He was Where? holding the Holy Bible. Oh, there it is, right here. Yeah, him. Do you still think the Bible is evil? Still think the Bible Which God? The Your God don't speak. It's a bull. The Bible, the idol. The Bible is a book of good and evil and Islam is a way of life. No, Jesus is the way, the truth, yeah, the life. The People listen to the Bible and read parables and ain't got too much for understanding. Yeah, because you're using a carnal mind. I'm under the possession of the Holy Spirit. That's how God wants you to live so that you have to live. No, we worship in spirit and truth. Truth. Spirit that we got from the Holy Spirit. What are you worshiping? The carnal mind. Exactly. That is foolish Yo, at least in the sight honest. of the Lord. At least he's you honest. Said, you said it's foolish, but I could grab any page in this book and flip it to a message that relates to your life. Any page. That doesn't make any sense. That's, too I just, that's why I didn't answer it. It was foolish. It was foolish. What is that big mic you got? What is that? You're about to see. You're about to see, man. Yo, why am I so cold? It was just like, like warm outside. Supposed to get into like the early 60s tonight. Uh, hey, can you hold this for a second? I'll put yeah, on my yeah. hoodie. Yo, it's so sensitive. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's so sensitive. You gotta hold it down here. The mic is right there. So it's going straight up. You bought, you bought that? No, I, I, I got a good trade for it. Would you walk around with this? <laughs> so what? Uh, I don't I, care. I don't uh, care. I keep it right there. It doesn't even matter. It <laughs> doesn't matter. All right. You know what? I'm going to put it on. It just makes me feel like this like some type of sex toy. So no. I mean, no like, what? I, I can't. I can't do this. Like, I don't, I don't like it. We're like speaking it. through it. Man. I'm going to try. We're not try sitting on it. it. Come on, dude. Oh, man. I'm gonna try to get used to it, that's all. They were like, they were looking at me, and, and they were like, oh, does, does your church uh, preach you go to them? I'm like, yeah, Hope Center does that. I'm like... Hallelujah. See, ladies and gentlemen, the prayer of forgiveness is something we all seek. And we must all seek at some point in our life. Forgiveness is a valuable gift that is neither easily obtained 
nor easily given. Forgiveness is essential for life. It freely gives, it, free, it frees us. Try to, try to separate it, try to separate it from, from the mic. You see, forgiveness is essential for life. It frees us from past wrongdoings and gives us hope for the future. It is for forgiveness sake that Jesus Christ came to the earth to die for mankind. Prayer for forgiveness made possible by Jesus Christ. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, the prayer of forgiveness is a prayer that is offered up to God. That we may directly hurt each other, all of our trespasses ultimately hurt God. In the emotional sense, we, you may wonder how is that possible? How can our shortcomings hurt the omnipotent creator of the universe? Well, ladies and gentlemen, does God even care? In Genesis chapter 6, we find that God himself actually grieved over all the wrongs that man has inflicted upon each other. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 through 6. And that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on earth and was grieved in his heart. So all knowing God grieves even at the mere thought of evil. Thus ultimately Forgiveness must also come from God. However, because of His justice, forgiveness cannot be freely given. Every wrong must be accounted for in the order for God to be just judge. You see, Jesus Christ died on the cross at Calvary in our place so that our sins may be forgiven. His suffering paid for our transgressions. Matthew chapter 26 verse 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So in his love, God knew that our conscience needed to be freed from the guilt and condemnation. He knew that forgiveness of sins was our greatest need. And in the ultimate act of love, God not only suffered the pain of our wrongs, but also paid for their consequences in order that we may have forgiveness offered to us when we sin. Hallelujah. We all need to do one thing, and that is accept his free gift of, the, of forgiveness. Perhaps you have stumbled upon hearing my message today, looking for forgiveness to smooth a tormented soul. Or maybe you are struggling to try to forgive someone in your family some of your friends for deeply hurting you. For all who accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, forgiveness has been freely given. If we acknowledge our wrongs and ask for forgiveness, God will forgive us, no questions asked. John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and this today ladies and gentlemen is what we need as a people not only to be forgiven from a judge in the Hudson County Courthouse <laughs> that type of forgiveness is never going to make it but if we reject Jesus in essence we reject God's gift of forgiveness. We are in fact saying that we do not need to be to wish to be reconciliated with God. John, first John chapter one verse ten. Though it is our free choice to not accept forgiveness from God, we will ultimately be accountable for all the sins we have committed in the end of this life. Yo, it's 
this microphone loud or what? It's not. You can't even hear it over here. <laughs> it's loud here. It's loud here. Right? But when I go deep into the crowd, you can't hear this. Let me turn it all the way up there. Alright, try it again. It is God's deep desire to be reconciliated with you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Same scripture that some people wear. If you desire to truly be forgiven, consider what Jesus and sincerely accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You will be forgiven. And God will begin to transform the work in your life. And that's what some of us need today. We need to be transformed. We need to be transformed from the homosexuality. We need to be transformed from the sins that we commit in our life. Some people don't believe that, you know, they commit sin. They think they're perfect. But ladies and gentlemen, there is only one that is perfect. And he sits in heaven. Hallelujah. And he gave us his word to follow. Prayer of forgiveness, ladies and gentlemen, is to receive a new life. The prayer of forgiveness gives us a new hope and a new beginning. And all of our sins are wiped away by God. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. So if you understand that you are a sinner and you believe that Jesus Christ came as the one and only redeemer of sin, then you understand the prayer of forgiveness. And the question is, are you ready to, to, to implement the, the prayer by, by receiving God's gift of his son, Jesus Christ, is the question. We must turn to God to commit the rest of our lives to him as our Lord. And seek Jesus today. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So what's up? No difference? No difference, man. It's all right. They, they, they going to town over there with them trumpets. Uh, no, it's, it's because of the music that they're playing. It, it's not... We can't hear it from here, but it's blasting towards that way. So that's what makes it, makes it different. And it's all right, keep going, it's all right. You can hear it at the crosswalk, right? You can hear it at the crosswalk, yeah. You can hear it when you walk through that little tent section? Uh, at the beginning, yeah. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, if you decide to, for, to receive Jesus today, if you've been struggling with anything in your life and you choose to receive Jesus today, then now is the time. Now is a way to grow closer to Him. The Bible tells us to follow up on our commitment. Get baptized as commanded by Christ. Tell someone else about your faith in God. Spend time with God each day. It does not have to be a long period of time or however the spirit of the Lord dwells upon you, but just develop the daily habit of praying to God and reading his word. And we must ask God to increase our faith and our understanding of the Bible. Seek fellowship with another believer of Christ and develop a group of believing friends, just as you see here, to answer your questions and support you. Trust in Jesus Christ today. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Thanks for watching our current reality. I really appreciate you watching my video until its entirety. But listen, I have a very important message for the people who are watching right now. If that's you, don't click out of this YouTube video. Stay right here and watch what I got to tell you. Now, over time, I have warned people repeatedly about this, and they still have not listened to me. Now the time has come, and I am letting them know right now that this most likely will probably be the last time that you ever hear from me. Now, I'm not saying this because I'm leaving YouTube. Rather, I will be taken from you. For the people who do not have God a part of their life, it saddens my heart that they refuse to listen. But ye, verily, verily, I say unto you, a time is coming, and has now come, 
where they will regret ever not listening to my words of wisdom. And at the time of this recording, I am still here, but only for a short while longer. Now, I am making this my last plea to you to get right before it's too late. In Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 1 through 6, God makes it crystal clear right there who he holds responsible for anyone who failed to heed the watchman's warning. So now that I am being faithful to the call to sound a warning trumpet, it's up to others like yourself to respond. And with the help of the Holy Spirit and the love that resides in his heart, we trust your response and result of watching this video, you will make the right decision in being saved from the painful death by grace through faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, if people don't listen to me now, and these events happen, and they decide to turn their heart to God, then you should prepare yourself. Please don't wait. I am pleading with you right now to turn from your ways and to hear this warning of truth that if you do not have God in your life right now, you will face hardship in your life. If you watching this right now, you can make this turn around right now. But if you still not listen and take this as a joke, then so be it. Someday soon, the Lord Jesus will return and take all the born again to heaven. These instructions are what I have written to the people who are left behind to tell them what to do after they have missed the rapture. I am warning you about this now because I won't be around then. All these instructions are found in the Holy Bible which is the first thing you need to go to to find out what is going on. So if you feel you want to make this right and heed to this truth, I have put in some information in the channel's description. Check it out. Don't forget, don't delay. You can email me, you can contact me through social media, facebook.com slash the real one witness, that's number one witness, twitter.com slash the real one witness, that's number one witness, youtube.com slash C slash one witness spelled out. Or you can hit me up on my email, our current reality at yahoo.com. Don't delay. This is your life on the line.